begin here tonight, guys. We want to just point out we're having some technical difficulties with the stream, so we are on Facebook Live. Um, so just be mindful of that. And for those of you watching on Facebook Live, we really appreciate your patience and willingness to be flexible with us this evening. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to Mayor Myers. Let's call the meeting to order. Madam Clerk, would you call roll, please? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Are you able to hear me? You're good now. Mr. Combs? Present. Mr. Henchy? Present. Mr. Luther? Present. Mr. Nelson or Ms. Nelson? Present. Mr. Clue? Present. Ms. Sabacher? Here. Mr. Stone? Present. Mr. Washington? Present. Thank you, Council Members President. Thank you. Reverend Williams, I'm going to say the invitation for us, please. Sure. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we begin with our neighbors across the Pacific in Maui and on the island of Hawaii. We pray, Lord, today for the grief and the brokenness that is absolutely encompassed those communities and, for the most part, our world. We pray for the families that are the grieving losses that they can only assume. We pray, Lord, for recovery that will take years in compass. And we pray, Lord, for relief workers that are working tirelessly to help these folks day to day along this journey. On this side of the Pacific, we pray for California, massive rains and mudslides, along with a hurricane that passed through has brought havoc to those communities. So we pray today for the relief workers and those that are doing rescue and recovery, that you meet with them in times such as these. Then our prayer comes to the heartland of America. This intense heat, Lord, has brought real challenges on infrastructure, on folks, Lord, that may not have cool air, and for those that are working in construction zones and trying to do outdoor work in this climate. Lord, please protect life and limb across the heartland for those who have to face these elements each day. I'm grateful, Lord, in our community for those who serve tirelessly here to lead us. Our mayor and council persons, our department heads and administrators, and all of those that day to day keep us progressing and moving forward as a community. Schools are starting here at Full Public tomorrow, but they started in our outlying areas already. And I pray, Lord, tomorrow that everyone will get up be well aware of school zones, the need to obey the school zone speed limits. It's not something we lay at the feet of the police. It's all our responsibilities, every one of us, to protect the safety of our children, the integrity of our schools and education programs. So let us be aware as this new year begins in our community to all work together for the greater good of our children, their education, and their safety. I pray for this session tonight, and I continue to lift up uh, Mr. Caswell's recovery. I'm grateful, Lord, to hear Mrs. Recluse's voice tonight, and I pray your blessings on her and the mayor as he continues to mend. I pray for all work that's done, discussions that are held, and any decisions that are made, that they first be pleasing to you. We pray all of this together through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Face of life. <clears throat> Attention, salute, and pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Reverend. Now we have one 
most important thing to the knife is the proclamation. And I'm going to... Courtney, you want to come forward? Um, well, uh, Kathy was 
was gracious enough to, to uh, make sure that we got this plaque for you. And, uh, I want to present uh, this plaque to you and honor uh, your service to the city of Baltimore. That's very nice. Thank you. <laughs> Visitors, if we have uh, any visitors who want to uh, address the council, please uh, come up to the mic and give us your name and uh, your address, and you'll have about three minutes. <clears throat> Seeing no one come forward, we'll move on. We have a public hearing this evening. Our tax uh, property tax levy. The format for the hearings will be uh, as follows. Uh, I will issue three calls for anyone wishing to speak in opposition. Then three calls for anyone wishing to speak in favor of. We ask that you come to the podium, state your name and address. The council will not interact with you at this time. And um, we'd like you to keep it about three minutes. Again, there will be three calls for anyone wishing to speak in opposition and three calls for anyone to speak in favor of. First call for anyone wishing to speak in opposition. Seeing no one, I'll have a second call for anyone that wishes to speak in opposition of the tax levy. Seeing no one, I'll have a third call for anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the tax bill. Now there will be three calls for anyone wishing to speak in favor of. First call for anyone wishing to speak in favor of the tax levy. Second call for anyone wishing to speak in favor of this matter. Third call for anyone wishing to speak in favor of this matter. Seeing no one come forward, this public hearing is now closed and we'll move on to our regular agenda. Next on the agenda is the uh, approval of the consent agenda. I think you'll have time to read that. Uh, does anyone want to pull anything out of there? If not, I'll entertain a motion to accept that. Make a motion to accept the consent agenda as presented. Second. Second. Thank you. Motion has been made and second to accept the consent agenda. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Now we'll have the um, presentation of the direct uh, DOA report.
Would you like to go over any specifics? I, um, I would just kind of open the floor like we did last time. If there are any questions on the DOA report, um, we can certainly make ourselves available to answer any questions that the council might have. Seeing none, do we have a motion? Um, I make a motion to approve the DOA report. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second to approve the DOA report. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. And then we'll have a presentation of the financial statement. CFO. Uh, City of Fulton reported six months of sales tax in uh, 2023. Uh, collections are down 0.14% from fiscal year 2022. Uh, tax is up 20.5% from 2023. Uh, do you have questions about the report? Yeah, it's down 0.14% um, really. I would consider that to be consistent. I'm talking about three thousand dollars out of two point four million, so it's I would say the minimum is pretty it's significant. Yeah. Yeah, that was under uh, enterprise funds, uh solid waste and then uh, percent budget use were around sixty-five point four nine percent on the was driving that up and we need to account for that in the next year's we're talking about in the uh, solid waste tonight. I don't know. Um, I can I can research that and get back to you. Um, I know there's some allocations of personnel that we're looking at to you that were changed, so we'll try to get that that squared away. But I think off the top of my head, I can't tell you. Sorry, we're talking about no, oh, you're fine. So please. Good, uh, good idea. Any other questions? Seeing none, do we have a motion to accept? Any motion to accept the financial report? Second. Thank you. I think our questions have been answered. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Mm -hmm. We have no unfinished business at this time. We have one item of new business. We had a last minute addition today, uh, an event that would be coming up soon that a lady asked if we could maybe amend our agenda to review it and discuss approval. Make a motion to Make a motion to amend the agenda to accept the new item for, business, for new business. Thank you. Second. Motion has been made and second to amend our agenda to include the new uh, item. Tom and Stone, want to read that? Nicole Myers will be present to. Um, is Nicole Myers present? Okay. Ms. Myers, come on in. <clears throat> Nicole Myers is here to request permission to host a carnival tournament benefiting the Central Missouri Honor Flight on September 23rd, 2023, from 3 p.m. to 10 p.m. at the Elton Hensley Airport. This request includes food trucks on the property and entry fees for the tournament. We know I call you want to share with us? Um, so the morning there's the cake pancake breakfast that's occurring at the same location in our hangar at the airport. 
Um, so it's a busy, long day for us hosting both these events. Um, this event is new to us, but the organization putting it on the ESA um, would like this to become an annual event. Not really set on a date for this, but I have no concerns um, with hosting this type of event. Um, we've participated in cornhole tournaments for some time now. Um, my husband is an avid player, although he's not very good. Um, he still has a good time. <laughs> so, um, my only concern would be uh, the flyers have gone out already saying BYOB on them. We can amend that to uh, let the players know that there's no alcohol allowed on the premises. Um, that'd be my only concern at this point. Does this point be affiliated with the state organization? No, um, so it's Epsilon Sigma Alpha. It's a group of ladies out of Columbia. I've met with them a few different times. Um, they pick different fundraisers to host events, and they've done larger events in the past where they're trying to scale it back and do something a little less involved that needed 50 volunteers to pull off. And so they approached us and asked if we could host it. And um, the Cornhole tournament side itself is ran by Brian Kendall out of Jeff City. He runs a lot of tournaments down there. Um, so we've been working as a team amongst the three groups to kind of host this. So our role is just really the location. Um, and they're hoping to raise a lot of money and entice a lot of players. Uh, $50 entry fee with the 80% payout, we should be full. Good, those usually turn out very well. Yes, they do. If you want to get um, Courtney some information, I think we can put it on our website as well. Perfect. Any other questions? Is it Nicole? Yes. Nicole, uh, I, I think it's a great idea. Um, are you going to be doing a flying on this too? No, not this portion of it. So the pancake breakfast usually it has an option for flying that morning. It does start at 7 a.m. though. Um, so there is some flying that happens in the morning. It will be done by about 11, 12 o'clock. So there will be a couple hour gap between the two events. Um, let us have some time to reset. Um, we typically clear out our hangar for an event like this, just like we did through the summer luncheon that I came and spoke to you guys about, which turned out great. We had about 50, 60 people show up for that just on the airport. Um, so that was a wonderful turnout. We raised almost $200 for the KPA scholarship fund just on that one event. Um, so in this particular event, these guys will just drive in. I don't anticipate any flying for any participants. Um, I mean, I guess they could, but. Thank you, Nicole. And just for clarifications, I know that you, you mentioned it, Ms. Myers. Thank you for being able to be with us this evening. Um, so the alcohol piece is something uh, in regards with our FAA assurances, our grant insurances, we do not allow alcohol on those premises. So that is why, um, even though the information is already put out there, we can't allow BYOB on those premises, just for clarification. So the only feedback I have to that is there are plenty of events, including the, the uh, um, air show that's happening in Jefferson City that will be hosting beer tents on site during the event. Um, so to have alcohol be affiliated with some of these events, specifically ones that people are not typically flying into, they're driving into, is not uncommon. And there are stipulations, and I'd have to go pull the regs to know exactly which FAA reg would outline when it's allowable to have alcohol on site. Um, but there are exceptions to that rule. Um, if you guys would grant it, if, I mean, we can, I can get back to you. I would reach out to our visitor office in Kansas City and have David Johnson pull that for me and send it over if that's something that would be allowed. I will say outside of the state council, it's not going to be something that will be allowable for this event because not only do we have our grant assurances, but we do have city code and ordinances that would prohibit it on city property um, outside of our, our permitting process. So this is not something for this specific um, event that we would be able to allow, but it's certainly something we could look at those regulations if you'd like to get them to us sure. um, for something in the future we think. Sounds great. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. I just want to Sorry, to clarify, so uh, you already mentioned it, but the, the Kingdom Pilots Association Pancake Breakfast uh, was brought to our attention. We've been doing this annually for uh, years. Year. 
a long time. <laughs> but uh, to make sure it's uh, treated the same across the board or bring it to the council, so that'd be part of this discussion. There's some cool on that as well, so thank you for this too. Just for clarification. So typically they haven't had to come in front of the council to ask for permission to use airport property for the event. And so when I visited with Kathy about it and uh, Brad, we ended up, you know, making sure I could mention that tonight. Brad and I mentioned that tonight of we want everybody to, you know, be the same and have the same requirements. So I am asking on behalf of the KPA as well for that event. I am a KPA member. Um, and so the board president, Jonathan Adams, gave me the ability to speak on behalf of the KP for that event as well. Since it was brought up, Washington. Yeah, but yes. Since it was brought up, you said they want this to be an annual? Correct. Okay. Now, my question is do we, do we still want them to bring before the council? Uh, instead of just being automatic, like you said, pancake thing, it's automatic, so you don't have to come to the council. What about this event? We've talked about across the board about you know just annual events and how we handle those. Historically, we've always had people come back because there typically are different facets that might change that we really need to make sure we're looking at. So uh, again, that's something I think we could look at our policy internally and make sure that we're handling it fairly across the board. That's a, a perfect way of describing that. Uh, but I would not encourage the council to do a blanket statement for moving forward, at, at least at this time, That's for any of those. Yes. Okay. Then we may review that um, um, liquor policy as well when you get that to us. So sure. That could change. Are there any concerns about the flyer going out saying BYOB and actually trying to enforce that and letting people know that they actually can't bring alcohol on the premises? I mean, obviously, I can't control what's in their car or in their trunk or anything like that. But if we make these players aware there, that there's no alcohol at this specific event, they typically are respectful of that and understanding um, on a case by case. You know, there are other formal events that do not have alcohol at them. It's not like this is the first one. Um, so um, definitely, Brian is one I will lean on to get that message back out to the players um, that have signed up and so everybody understands um, the expectations of the event. I just, I'm not sure what I can do to police that if I'm also working the event and they're in the parking lot or at a food truck or something along those lines. Um, we're going to do our best to discourage that. It's just kind of that, as much as I can do, I guess. Chief Ludwig, do you have any concerns on that? Okay, any further questions? Do we have a motion? I'd like to make a motion to approve Cornwall Sherman with all the um, uh, items necessary to run that and the pancake breakfast and everything, with the exception of no alcohol on the premise. Second. Okay, motion to name and second it. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Have fun. Awesome, thank you. Okay, we'll move on to council concerns. Councilman Henshaw. Yes, I would like to um, provide a very big thank you to the engineering staff and the police um, department for setting up the poll hunting on the 30th um, and to let everybody know that that poll hunting meeting is on the 30th of August at 6.30 p.m. at the Red Place. I think uh, the engineering department has done an outstanding job setting up the, the uh, events too. Thank you very much. I want to add also real quick, if you do not attend that meeting, you cannot vote on it. I want to stress that. You have to attend that safety meeting to be able to hunt in the, uh, on city property in the city limits of full. That's correct. Right. <coughs> Thank you for this hit. Councilwoman. Uh, no board or commission report this evening. I 
do just want to ask um, if we can get an update or if there even is an update on the letter of recommendation that we were requested to write for the gentleman on Front Street. Um, was that completed? It was something that I brought up the other day. It's doing a remodel on the old Hampton Court. Okay. I'm going to have to look into that for you. I have not seen, seen any kind of update on that. So <laughs> let me take a look into that. Thank That's you. Okay. Thank you. If I can add, we did send those letters out immediately. Oh, just in the following days. Okay. Councilman McClue, Councilman Walker McClue, I'm sorry. Yes, um, I just was wondering how we're doing on the history, of course, Second Street um, problem we have uh, at the intersection. Are we uh, cutting out part of that wall or where are we at on that? Yeah, it's been taken care of. I think, Kyle, you want to address that real quick? City engineer Kyle Brewer. Um, yes, we had the uh, company come cut that wall down. Um, it is not a complete project at the moment. Uh, the, the street department will come back and, and put a uh, kind of sub wall further back in into uh, West Coast property um, that angles and allows still allows uh, that that side distance to happen. But uh, at least in the meantime, you can see. See uh, over the shorter wall and, and see oncoming traffic. But, uh, yeah, that will, will tremendous improvement too. Okay. Mary, you have anything else? No, that's all. Thank you. Okay. Councilman Stone? Yeah, it's just a couple of things. One, just a huge thank you to the engineering department, the street department, everybody that was involved with that administration getting the clearance from the current owners, just all of that work, and it's a huge, huge improvement to that intersection. Thank you very much, Kyle. Um, I wasn't here last meeting, so just a thank you for the, the presentation of the historic property to the Smith family. Um, thank you very much for that. The Historic Preservation Commission the next meeting is Wednesday, September 20th at 1 p.m. in the executive conference room. It is open to the public, it's open to all council members, administration, as well as any citizens that are interested in coming in and hearing about the historic preservation of Fulton. Um, Saturday is, Kiwanis is celebrating our 100th anniversary on Saturday from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. in Veterans Park. It's going to be a huge party in the park. I've presented on that before, but it's now this weekend. Um, so just come out, bring your family. Everything's free. We're going to have lots of fun games, uh, live entertainment. Um, any council members that want to be in the dunking booth are still welcome to, to volunteer. Um, but that's Saturday from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. And then just on a sad note, I just want to acknowledge and recognize the passing of David Beaver. He was a huge, huge influence in this community. He's he's come before this council many, many times with all the various activities and organizations that he works with, and just everything that he's contributed. Um, I've known him since I was four years old, and he's been an influence that 50 years, and has never stopped. And so, just this community lost lost a big asset with with the past few days. It's going to take many people. To pick up all the things that he was using. Yes, that's right. Thank you. Hello, Councilman Luther. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, there was an airport advisory board. The uh, pancake breakfast, breakfast, September 23rd, uh, 7 to 11. Uh, Please can get your pancakes there and also the event that 
We also spoke about the 1520 line, the uh, We looked at uh, basic planning and zoning, what's that property going to look like in the future, where are some hangers going, maybe some businesses. Uh, we talked about uh, our courtesy car and, and the updates on that. Uh, also, a lot of lease discussions, you know, what happens we make our lease. Uh, good for the city, but also good for investors, good for people who want to come here and build. So, a lot of good discussion. Again, we went to almost two and a half hours. Uh, appreciate Kyle and the rest of the team for the board. Um, other than that, uh, no additional uh, concerns at this time. Thank you. Okay, come to the call. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission is not met. It's our last meeting, and I have no concerns. Mm -hmm. Very good. Councilman Washington. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Watch and Rack on the left, C. Clay has a little thing on this. It's good to see you. And uh, at this time, I believe we haven't had a board meeting uh, yet. I think we're going to go on the way. So. Uh, there's no, there's no Thank you. Council Woman Nelson. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, the utility board has not met since the last council meeting. The next meeting is mon this coming up Monday, the 28th, um, in the conference room that is open to the public. Um, and I encourage anybody who would like to join to come. Um, and then I wanted to know, Kyle, if we had an update on the demolition properties. Where we are on that. Yes, I'm glad you asked. We uh, finally got a small breakthrough, but uh, we we it has been in the queue for the uh, uh, tribal nation to do the cultural review. Uh, I got a response um, earlier this week from from that. Uh, reviewer that is now out of the queue and on that person's desk, so I'm hoping that in the, in the next couple of weeks we'll have, we'll have uh, their answer back to us on what's going to be required and anything. So, um, that's what we got. Progress. Thank you, Kyle. And I have no other concerns tonight. Okay, thank you. I have a couple things I, I uh, Got some information today that uh, JCMP is going to be having a ribbon cutting in the first of October. I believe that the possibly the weather, I think it is, so we'll have the uh, medical uh, facility out there available. Um, I think they had some problems with some equipment or something, is what delayed it, maybe, but um, we got that going. And uh, Calvin Stone uh, mentioned the uh, Kiwanis thing this this coming uh, weekend, and it's really been exciting in Bolton because almost every weekend there's something going on, and it uh, gives the people something to go to. Last uh, we had it down at Memorial last week, the uh, county health department had that, and that was that was a really successful event. And uh, I know uh, BFW had an event last weekend. And there was an event at uh, CNR Market. Uh, last weekend, so there's so much going on every weekend that uh, it's really neat to see uh, things going that our, that our citizens can get involved in and then have some fun over the weekend. Also, um, Deputy Mayor Seabockers wasn't here last meeting, and I want to thank her uh, for filling in on for a couple of meetings for me. And I kind of on something out. I, I thought that might be the case, but I found something out today I thought was very interesting. The last female to um, preside over a council meeting was uh, Dorothy uh, Rystack. And that was back, and they couldn't tell me the exact date, but it was back somewhere in the mid 90s. So uh, I want to commend her for that. So, Okay, we'll move on to resolutions. I apologize, Mayor. Do you mind, uh, since we, we finished out on utilities, I actually wanted to bring Daryl or something. Oh, you want to do that now? Yes, please. Okay. Um, Daryl, if you can go ahead and come on up, and we uh, want to discuss transformers. Thanks. 
Yeah, don't like the utilities. We're not out of transformers, but we got a deadline on Friday to sign up with Arkansas Electric to get a order in for next year that will be guaranteed. Arkansas Electric is the only one who's open that window for us. We will lose we will use our five hundred for the new school expansion. That was our spare, but we had a seven fifty as large as we could use possible. So really we need to replenish your spares and if the subdivision does another couple streets. We're, we're not out. <clears throat> Mike got here is saying uh that credit is not out. And it's probably getting over like a hundred thousand dollars. That five hundred is fifty thousand right there. Uh, everything is still slow. We opened this today. Courtney was there for proposed. <laughs> so everything's still still struggling. Oh, I'm going to chip it up just with the public. But everything is still lagging. So we would like to go on that list with, with Arkansas Electric before Friday. And right now the utilities are still bartering. We loaned, we traded capacitors for transformers and transformers for transformers twice now. Probably the last 24 months. Be in other cities going, so we're, we're lucky that we have some extra that we can trade and help other folks out. But uh, we'd like to have this. Is there wording for a motion that you would like to use some things? My suggestion would be to authorize us to proceed with mm -hmm. those purchases before Friday. Before Friday. Okay. I'll make that motion. Second. Any further discussion on that motion? Was this something that was planned for budget wise? And did we know that this was coming? And you mentioned the deputy price tag. I just want to make sure that we took account for that. Yeah, we had transformers in the budget. We did not know they were closing in the this soon. We got notice of that probably last Thursday. So it sounds like we're going to vote for two. Is that adequate? Well, the largest one's fifty thousand dollars, and then we'll have various other ones that seventy five paid me and some fifties so okay. and make it up. And the, the hundred thousand number is a rough number because nobody would be priced on it. Sure. Do you think that there would be a need for more than that? We will review with engineering any other subdivisions that may be adding. So we're out looking for delivery of these until probably next summer or next year. The, the Arkansas Electric has been a good bigger of ours. The, the co-op in Arkansas actually owns our real transformers. So we, we don't feel like we're going to be a good cash buyer. That makes any sense. The only other thing, and that's an excellent question, Council, and I'd say Bakker, um, you know, we've been talking about this ever since COVID. So supply chains are very strained. Uh, the, the time period in which we have to order things and wait two years to get them, you know, that continues to be an issue. So that's something that we're looking at not only now with our budgeting cycle that's going on and planning for the upcoming years, um, but also just in our general purchasing policies to make it, you know, so that we still conform with, with the statute and our legal requirements. But we're going to continue seeing, um, you know, this this difficulty across all facets, just like any other business. That supply and demand issue. Are you at all concerned that we find ourselves in a situation where we don't have that spare supply? And if so, is there some kind of arrangement with other communities, or how, how would that look for us? The closest communities to us that have the same voltage as we do is Columbia and Barcelona. That's the two closest ones to us. Look, they're close for your size. Mm -hmm. The, the local co op must do not have the same voltage. So, if we were without any need, is there? There would be a plea put out like there has been by MTUA for other cities, and then the same way we was reached out to by one that uh, had a Dollar General store opened up, mm -hmm. and they were the transformer before the tram break was started, but the transformers weren't there with the break open. So, the Missouri well, utilities usually reach out and they. We should make it one way or the other. That's but it's, it is getting tight. Will there be another opportunity to purchase these? Not with Arkansas Liquor. If you, if you miss the deadline, they're, they're closing their books right. That's one of them. 
and, and we did reach out to the uh, transport manufacturers in our south if we get the river and see if we can buy direct from them and they told us that's going to be the So we did, we did chase that. Thank you for doing that. I, I appreciate that. I mean, that I love that there's the option to facilitate, you know, not only our needs, but to also help other communities if that need should arise. And keeping those communication lines open is extremely important. So, nice work. Sorry, I keep following you. No, no, good. <laughs> Mr. Devlin, I really appreciate you doing that. Uh, Mr. Daria, I'm just curious, is there a possibility that we should be setting up a a budget item, line item for these things in the future so that we can just we, we've got transformers in stock and we didn't have them on the budget and in the budget what what i think everybody got used to is 20 years ago you stocked all this stuff and then we got this just in time mentality where people didn't stock stuff and you you, you lean on your vendors but it looks like we're going to go back to the era of you know how to stock it yes because the last thing we want is a developer come into town and we say we can't serve you. And, and we've been we've been very close a couple of times. The, the worst one was probably the water meters. We were bound to take in, you know, your service trucks have water meters on them in case they go out and a water meter doesn't work and stop them. We was down to taking meters off the service trucks to uh, hook up new services. That was a little too tight. Well, the trouble is, like how we mm -hmm. like we found out that um, before COVID, you could buy things in maybe 12 weeks or something like that. And now those 12 week kind of items are sometimes 52 to 60 weeks long to supply. The Transformers, this group, gave us permission two years ago to buy. <coughs> it was over a year. Okay, thank you, Jeremy. All right, we have a motion. Any second? Any other questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Daryl will be here in a moment. Now we'll move on to resolution. Councilman Cohn, you reach resolution 35. Oh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Resolution number 3508, Grave Excavating Services. Resolution authorizing the mayor on behalf of the city of Fulton, Missouri, to execute a contract with the Fulton Construction Company of Fulton, Missouri, with Grave Excavation Services to establish an effective date. To make a motion to adopt and accept resolution 3508 to tonight's meeting. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. To adopt resolution 3508, um, I'd like to say Coleman has uh, worked with the city for many years, and I think they have never had a problem that I'm aware of. Um, so that being said, if you have questions. Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Councilman Combs, would you read uh, Resolution 3509? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Resolution 3509 confirms the McDonald NPDESP agreement. Is a resolution authorizing the mayor on behalf of the city of Fulton Bridge to sign all necessary documents in relation to this amendment. Confirms the McDonald agreement pertaining to the National Pollution Discharge Elimination System Permit. I make a motion to adopt resolution 3509 in this council meeting. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second. Daryl, do you need to have a council on vacation? <laughs> Where's Richard at? In all honesty, <laughs> we were kind of taking bets as to who was going to get to come up here and talk about this one. I don't know if anyone, you know, I think it's safe to say we all know Kyle, Kyle can really explain things incredibly well. Daryl's a little bit more succinct and brief, so Kyle's very excited to be able to talk to you guys about this tonight. <laughs> Railroad engineering again. Yes, that's right. I think uh, in our, our pre-meeting on this, I went way too long-winded and Daryl said, 
uh, bottom line is we're out of money for the birds and the animals, and, and we need to pay more. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, uh, Bertha McDonald is an engineering company that's uh, been been working with our wastewater treatment plant, um, and the perm it's it's permit it's permitting with the Department of Natural Resources. Um, so we uh, we came to you guys. I don't know, Year ago or so, and uh, did the first phase of this contract, and this is an extension of that contract. Um, so far, they've they've done a, a good job negotiating with DNR, with the DNR on the permit, and kind of going through the language uh, specifically of that permit and what that ultimately is going to obligate us to do. So um, they've uh, we feel that they they provide a good service. Uh, we are out of money on their current contract, and uh, that permit is still uh, is still in the comment period. It's not out for public comment yet, but uh, it's still being reviewed. And we're still working with them, so uh, we still would like to have their services. Thank you, Tom. Questions? Yeah. Seeing none. All in favor of Resolution 3509, please say yes. 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 Opposed? Yes. Very good. Resolution 3510, Councilman Henke, would you read that please? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Resolution 3510, Burns McDonald, WCSES, Agreement Amendment. A resolution authorizing the Mayor on behalf of the City of Fulton, Missouri, to sign all necessary documents in relation to an amendment to Burns McDonald Agreement pertaining to, to wastewater collection system evaluation services associated with the in, integrated management plan of the project. I make a motion to adopt resolution number 3510 at this council meeting. Second. Very well, do we have any questions on uh, resolution 3510? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, we now have 3511. Councilwoman Seabarker, would you uh, read that for us, please? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Resolution 3511, Transportation Alternatives Program Grant. A resolution of the City of Fulton, Missouri, stating intent to seek funding through the MODOT Transportation Alternatives Program Grant and authorizing the mayor to pursue activities in an attempt to secure funding. I make a motion to adopt resolution 3511 at tonight's council meeting. Second. Motion to make and second for uh, resolution 3511. Do we have questions on that? Seeing none. A call for a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? You okay, know, we have first read on um, Bill 1687, Bull Creek Subdivision Flat. Um, that's one and one. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Bill number 1687, Willow Creek Subdivision, Flat 6, an ordinance approving Flat 6 of the Willow Creek Subdivision. Make a motion that we move Bill number 1687 for second reading and next council meeting. Second. Very good. Thank you both. Motion has been made and second to um, advance Bill 1687 to our next council meeting. Discussion. I sent the email earlier this week about this one. I'd like to see us pull a section of the email out of there. That's my call. Yes. If you don't mind, your mic turned up. Thank you. Sorry about that. I'd like to see you pull a section of the out of there just to make sure that, not that I think there's anything wrong with it, the way it sits, um, but just having talked to some previous council members about some other things that have happened in this sort of period, making sure that this does align with all of our current ordinances and that approving this doesn't 
like basically waiting, needing to 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 agree and that's not saying this from them. Um, but just when it says, you know, uh, that approval of this. Yeah, it repeals all ordinances that would be in conflict. Um, I think that's pretty much standard. But I, mean, I, I can see that. But to me, it's like if we have a road ordinance, and then for some reason, not, again, not saying it's somebody would do this, but if somebody comes in and draws a map with a 24 inch road, or 24 foot road, and we don't catch it, and we approve it, it now repeals that ordinance that we already set in place. And so by pulling that out, it just means like we approve this, but it doesn't it doesn't conflict with any of our other references. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. And I again I appreciate you bringing that up, Councilman Cohen. As I mentioned in my response to you, the removal of that statement does not change the efficacy yeah. of, of this ordinance. So it is not something that it, um, we can certainly remove that statement. It is standard language. Uh, but we certainly don't want to create any additional confusion, um, you know. So we can we can certainly remove that if that's what the council wishes to do. Um, you are correct that by approving this, there could be a little question um, as to if, if we're truly revealing our own regulations. Typically, it does not go to that extent. Sure. But again, to avoid confusion, we absolutely can remove that if that's the desire of the city council. Would this require any amendment? At this point, you know, what has been submitted uh, to my office is, is the preliminary plat. Um, I know that I haven't done a complete review of that plat yet, and you know, Daryl has not yet either. So, um, you know, part of me would like to see a delay on this just so we can get a a further review on it, and it, it is a preliminary plat. It's not a, it's not a final plat that has been submitted. So, typically, typically a preliminary plat comes to uh, comes to the city, Kathy sees it, and, and uh, we review it, and then and then it goes to planning and zoning for recommendation, and then to you guys. So uh, that's how it's been done, and. Uh, Kathy, I don't know if you can add anything on that. I was just, I was told to put it on there at this point. Gotcha. But okay. if, I just yeah, want to make sure that I have the process no, you, you, right. You, you absolutely head. are. Okay. And you I, I was just looking for, yeah, making sure yeah. that I have the process and I'm spouting yeah. off here as it is actually come out. So, uh, what I understand. That's how it's typically handled. So, and it, it hasn't really went through those steps completely yet. So, uh, Thank you for your timing. I, I completely respect that. I mean, we always expect these things to have already gone through planning and zoning before they come to us. Because we're not going to meet again until the end of September, um, I, I guess, unless unless you think there is a significant reason not to, I believe we can still move this on the second week. That would get us to the end of September and we give a month for you to bring anything. Sounds sounds yeah, great. Sounds exactly. great. I'm definitely not seeing it from all angles, and, and that's uh, just the just the, uh, Daryl and I were talking. We, were, we wanted to uh, throw that out, and we would like to see uh, to review it a little bit further ourselves to make sure that uh, some of those yeah. things that that yeah. have to be talking about. And, and I'd definitely like to have you know some sort of response from planning and zoning when we do we can be at the end of September. Makes total sense with the schedule. Is, is that enough time? I believe so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because our next plan, our next plan is zoning will be. Will be the meeting right before our council meeting at the next, in right. September. Right. Which will be second reading at that point. Perfect. It's still at our reading. We still have plenty of time to discuss it. Right, right. Then that makes it total sense. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. that's what my concern would be. Mm -hmm. The answer any questions that you do have as well as. And for the record, Bart Farmer moves to make it out on the scene, make it official, so that we can get you all that by who is watching online. Uh, Bart Farmer moves to make it um, from Little Creek South uh, for people's work construction. Um, yeah, the timeline is, is important. I mean, we'd like to start doing some grading and some preliminary work, whatever 
uh, engineering department would allow us to do while the weather is good. But uh, because of the delay and the meetings and missing the meeting, we would like to at least get the first reading of this and, and as well. To get that moved in, and we got to go through Green and Z uh, for the very flat. We'd be more than glad to do that. And I'd like to be on that schedule and agenda so we can get that going because uh, we're trying to do this design to get this to where we can get it under construction. So then Daryl can go first. The other thing I would say, uh, city council members, is if for some reason there are concerns or we need to revisit the, the manner of the steps in which we need to come back to this, we'll obviously convey that message to you guys. So if we believe it's going to take a little bit extra time or we need to get that official approval from planning and zoning, I do want to, I, I want to converse with Tom about that. So we're totally okay to move it forward this evening, but I want to make sure we don't sidestep the legal process on what order these steps need to take place. So. If you are so comfortable, please go ahead and move it to second reading, but we will continue doing some more public insight. In the middle of the uh, we obviously have a topic of discussing, we'll probably come back to it, but it would be a benefit that it comes to this for this reading to uh, report out from planning and zoning or engineering. Just to get those. Yes, we can absolutely do that. Okay, so that's the first reading. Okay, uh, any other discussion? Yeah. Mr. Mayor, if I may, uh, City Clerk, would the council like to remove section two of this ordinance? Are we in agreement with that? Section two, that all ordinances are parts of ordinances in conflict with this ordinance, is hereby repeated. Do you yes, strike that? Interested in doing that? Yes, and so we'll need whoever. I would like to make an amendment to my motion um, to take out section two and move that forward to second reading at the next scheduled council meeting. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second to amend. The motion is on the floor. Everybody understand what we're doing now? Okay. All in favor of the amendment? Please say yes. 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 We're good. Now we'll vote on the motion without with the amendment attached. All in favor of um, the uh, uh, motion with the, the amendment, please say yes. 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 Okay. We'll move that to um, the next meeting, which is going to be. Okay, announcements. Uh, we won't have, as everyone knows, a uh, meeting on uh, September 12th, and the next meeting will don't be. Don't we have a second reading? Mr. Mayor, we have a second reading. Yes. Yeah. Do what? The second reading. Yeah, the second meeting. That's one of the got to see the text. And now we've got to do the text. Okay, um, so I've got some on the law also in there. Okay. Now, so, would you read uh, 1686? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Bill number 1686, tax rate and levying of taxes. An ordinance fixing the tax rate and levying taxes for the calendar year of 2023 on all taxable property of the state of Oklahoma, Missouri at 0 0.5271 for each $100 of the assessed value of said property and establishing an effective date. I make a motion to place the bill number 1686 for third reading at this council meeting. Second. Second. Very well. I, I don't know how long it's been, but we had that same tax levy for many years, so nothing's changed. Okay, all in favor of um, advancing Bill 1686 to um, third reading tonight, please say yes. 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 Opposed? Councilman 
Read that again for us, please. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Bill number 1686, tax rate in Livingston, Texas. An ordinance fixing the tax rate of Living, Texas for the calendar year of 2023 on all taxable properties in the city of Fulton, Missouri, and a price of 0.5271 for each $100 of the assessed value of said property and establishing the effective date. I make a motion for the for the, uh, for bill number 1686 for the final passage of this council meeting. Second. Mayor Well, all in favor of the um, third reading of Bill 1686, please say yes. 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 Madam Clerk, will you call the roll, please? Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Hinty? Yes. Mr. Luther? Yes. Ms. Nelson? Yes. Ms. McClue? Yes. Ms. Sabacher? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Washington? Yes. Mr. Combs? Yes. Council members, affirmative. Very well. Uh, there will be uh, no council meeting on September the 12th, and we will reconvene on, on uh, September the 26th. We do not have a need for an executive session tonight. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Yes. Yes. Thank you all very much.